Have you heard about behavioral composition, the TDD missing skill? If not, don't worry, it's something that recently Kent Beck written about. And today in this video we'll take a look into that article and try to understand what is behavioral composition. As many things happen nowadays, it all started on Twitter. Maybe it's the moment to start calling it X, but I'm still not used to. And it all started with a tweet where Artem Zarkachenko, I'm maybe butchering his name, sorry Artem, where he posted a tweet where he was mentioning that TDD is something that is useless. Or, in his words, it's a process that is broken by definition, that w will not work. And why Artem says that? Because, according to him, to practice TDD, you need to know how the system will work beforehand. Why? Because you need to write the tests before writing the code. And it's a premise that if you have been practicing TDD, you know that is completely false. In fact, TDD is the opposite of that. When you practice TDD, you don't need to know the details of what you will implement. Because I think we all will agree on one thing. Either if you are writing test first or test after, we all start our development by knowing something about what we are trying to achieve. We know our end goal, we know the direction, we know what's that code about? What are we trying to solve in the real world? We might not know the inner details, the specificity. We might not know how we will achieve that, but we all need to know where we are heading to, even if you are writing tests first or test after. And the way that TDD works, that will be part of the process. That part of discovery is part of the process. You already assume that requirements will change, that you will and cover a lot of small details on how things should behave. Obviously, in some cases, we have just a moonshot idea, and we don't even know where we are going to, we don't even know if that will be possible, we don't know anything. But on those moments, what we'll do is that we'll first, we'll prototype something. We'll try to explore, we'll try to put things in action just to uncover if we have a path to follow. On those cases, you don't use TDD, but you don't use it until the moment you have an idea where you are heading to. The only justification that I can see for the ideas behind this tweet is that the process, the workflow that even Hartman describes is kind of like based on first you prototype, then you iterate, and then you test it. So what I believe from this definition described by Hartman of the workflow is that the prototype is the first step of writing the production code. So let me try to rephrase it. It's like if the, you iterate on top of the prototype. And I can see this working for sure. However, uh, what I also see is that if you follow this three-step process, it means that you are delaying the test to the end. And the chance for those tests being skipped is quite high you are doing waterfall once again. The chance to have pressure and releasing it without tests is quite high. And I also believe that it will subvert the, the principles of a prototype. It will lead you to naturally try to build a prototype with a lot of complexity in place because you are already trying to build the correct thing in the correct way. And I honestly believe that prototype should be something that should be as fast as possible, dirty, cheap, if you need to use the wrong tools for the job, you should use it. Then you pick the lessons learned and you start building the real thing. How's that related to the behavioral composition that brought us here? On this article, Kent Beck mentions that there's a TDD skill that practitioners like myself usually don't um, share it or we are not capable of explaining it. And he gives it the name behavioral composition to this skill. And what is behavioral composition? The idea is quite simple. It's taking a look into a complex behavior that you need to implement, that you need to test, and now you try to decompose it in small pieces, in small behaviors. And each one of those, will you will be able to test them in isolation and then implement it as expected to meet that expectation defined by the test. So let me try to bring an analogy so you can understand it. Imagine that our behavior the behavior that you are looking for is that a given person should move from point A to point B. 
That's our behavior, that's our requirement. But the skill, the behavior composition skill is being able to look at that behavior, that complex behavior that you need to fulfill going from point A to point B and understanding that there's a set of small behaviors that we'll need to play together in order to achieve that. As an example, so the person should be able to move the left leg, should be able to move the right leg, should be able to do those two things in coordination. The arms also play a part on it. There's also direction. So all of those small things will then be composed, will be combined, and only then it, they will form the complex behavior. And it's the skill of looking at uh, something as complex as saying go from point A to point B that is behavioral composition. Let's take a look at the example that Kant is using. He's using the example of a stack. As developers, we all know what is a stack, and we can even say that something should behave as a stack. But then, if we need to implement a stack, we need to decompose that complex behavior of a stack into multiple and small ones that, when combined, will form a stack. So, a stack is something that you should be able to see if it's empty or not. A stack is something that you should be able to push items into the stack. You should be able to pop items from the stack. A stack has order in place. When you push and you pop, the order matters. All of those small things is what makes the behavior of a stack. And that small list is basically behavioral composition. No, it doesn't mean that this is the only way of doing it. In fact, the likelihood of achieve a solution that is quite similar is quite high. But this skill of transforming a complex behavior into small ones that then will be combined is something that is extremely important to succeed with TDD when you are facing real world problems. And how do you put that in practice? There's a concept that I think I already mentioned on this channel, that is the test list. The test list, it, it can be a, a simple notepad file, it can be your notebook, a page on a, your notebook, it can be a sticky note, it can be whatever you want. But it's the place where when you are facing a, a requirement, a task to do, something like that, you will start writing down everything that comes to your mind, everything that needs to be tested. And you will use that test list as the tool to figure out those small behaviors that you need to implement. So the flow will be something like you pick a task from Jira or something like that, and now you look at it and you try to figure out all those small behaviors that you need to test. By the end, you will have a list with multiple entries, and now you need to start implementing them. How do you know which one is the first? There's no magical solution for that. The tool that I like to use is trying to find the one that looks like the most simplest one, the one that is quite clear to me how I will achieve that with just a few lines of code. But you might get into a point where you look at the ones in the list and you don't know how to achieve them. And if you feel that you are stuck on that place, now you have mainly two things that you can do. The first one is that you will take a look at, into one and you will try to understand for that one, if you can apply the same idea of behavioral composition, once again, if you can decompose that entry into multiple small behaviors. Often the problem is that we don't know where to start because the, the thing is too big and we haven't built the foundations, so that one is simple to do. And if even then you look at that and you don't know what to do, Maybe TDD is not the tool for the job that you are trying to achieve. Maybe it's the moment to try to go and explore and prototype and try to find the path and then we'll get back to that test list. Mainly because TDD is not a tool for exploration and is mastering this test list using this idea of behavioral composition simplifies the process a lot because TDD, as I like to say, is a getting things done methodology. You define a list of things that you need to do. You convert them into small actions. You find the next quick action that you can do that will move you forward. And you keep doing that over and over again. And you don't need to define the complete test list right out of the gate. If during the process you find something new, you find that there was something missing in your original idea or you understand that there's a new requirement coming up, you can always go back and add it to the list. So if you would like to see me putting this in action with live coding, just let me know. And before you go, make sure you watch this video right here where I have another recommendation for you in order to succeed with TDD.